Uh, next thing we will go under materials. Uh, if you remember in the in the in the design model or part of these tutorials, I specified f our air domain to be a fluid, and uh, fluent reaches all the way back there and picks up that uh, our whole body is a fluid, and it will automatically apply or assign the air as the default material to that fluid, which will be under cell zone. But you will see that in a moment. Uh, you can click the air. Change, uh, change, create, and if you wanted to, to let's say, uh, kind of match the experimental results, and some paper specified the density to be one, two, four, six, or something like that, you can do that and click change, create, and then close. But basically, we're going to keep the default of two to five. The viscosity in uh, Pascal's time seconds is this, which is. Uh, basically okay, so I'm not going to touch any of that. Um, next, the cell, zo cell zone condition, we can see that we have only one zone, which is our air. This is going to be the interior in the boundary conditions. You can see it already attached a type fluid, and we can click edit and see that the material for that fluid is air. So all is well with the world. Uh, if you had, um, let's say, a wind turbine or something with a rotating frame of motion, you would enable that and you would say it's rotating about an axis and you would specify the rotational velocity, but uh, I will actually make an another tutorial for, for all of that. So leave all of this as default and click OK. Uh, another thing to maybe uh, check here are the operating conditions and this would be our atmospheric pressure, which would be everywhere in the domain and our um, what fluent will be showing you is the gauge pressure above or below the atmospheric. Okay, so it's like a manometer if you are pumping your tire or anything. It the the zero is at the atmospheric pressure, and then anything above that is the the gauge pressure or below that. It's kind of a vacuum. So all of this is okay, and there's no gravity, so leave it as default. Uh, next, we will go to boundary conditions, and now you will see. Uh, the default boundary condition that Fluent uh, applies to, to any wall that is named in, in a manner not recognizable to it is a, a wall, a regular wall, which is a stationary wall with a no-slip condition. So there will be viscous forces or shear forces acting on this. A symmetry is basically a wall which, is, which has a specified shear of zero. So that's, that's the same mathematic condition. So we would be using a no-slip. And this is okay for the car because in the AMED body test, the car itself is a stationary in wind tunnel and the road is also stationary, which is the floor of the wind tunnel. So all of this remains okay. Uh, interior is an interior and you cannot change anything about that. The pressure outlet, you can see it's automatically recognized as a pressure outlet. That's why we named it as we did in the, in the meshing part of, of the tutorial. You can click edit and uh, the only thing well you would specify the gauge pressure which would be above or below atmospheric there is no need to type 101 325 here okay this would mean it's at two atmospheres pressure at the at the pressure outlet so zero here means atmospheric pressure um, and another thing is the turbulence you need to specify this and the fluent uh, I'm, all, I'm also going to be uploading a paper on this, but I can just show you. Uh, in the tutorial, I will be putting up this BCS, which is boundary conditions. Um, Fluent guys uh, recommend for external flows, which is basically our uh, aerodynamics, turbulence, intensity, and viscosity ratio. And this is what I like to use even before I knew that they recommended it. And basically, uh, you would set your turbulence intensities from about 1 to 5%. I usually like 1% for the velocity inlet because the, the air is going to be kind of a lot more calm there because you are either counting on uh, the turning vanes in a, in a wind tunnel to calm the flow down or you just have a very stationary air uh, anywhere else uh, through which the car is, is going. And then I'll like, I'd like to use 5% for the pressure outlet because after the, the flow has uh, encountered 
an obstacle, which would be our car. There can be a little bit more turbulence, uh, even though we are going to, our pressure outlet is um, some way down from the car, which is pretty far away, uh, and uh, the airflow will cal calm back down. It will still be more turbulent than the air at the velocity inlet. And then uh, they say that, um, that they recommend the values for intensity and stuff like that. And for external flows, turbulent viscosity ratio, which is the other setting, can be from 1 to 10%. And I like to leave it as the default 10%. It does not create any, any large uh, problem. So I'm going to be putting this on the web. Okay. And back here. Okay. So for the pressure outlet, you say its specification method is intensity and viscosity ratio. And put 5% here and leave 10% as the default. Click OK. Velocity inlet automatically recognized. Edit. Now, uh, first we can do this and say 1% and 10%. And then you would specify the, the velocity itself. I'm just going to zoom out a bit here. So the air is coming from the, our blue face and going towards the red face. So as you can see, this is the negative Z direction. So it would come opposite to the positive Z. Okay, so you can specify either a magnitude and direction, which would be, let's say, 40 meters per second, which will be, which will be our test case. And then you would say zero for this and minus one as the direction vector for Z. Or you can say components and you would say minus 40 right away here. So anything you like, minus 40 and this is all okay. And click OK. Uh, symmetries are symmetries and you cannot do anything about it. That's why I like them. And road, we said same as the car, it's a stationary wall with a no slip condition. OK, that resolves all the boundary conditions. Uh, dynamic mesh. Uh, we are not using this because there is simply no need. Uh, you would use uh, the dynamic meshing uh, option if you had um, a piston in an engine which would be moving up and down or the valves or somebody opening the door on the car um, or let's say a moving wing on the rear or anything that would require a remesh during the calculation itself. But that, that is a bit more complex and we are just not going to be interested in this. Reference values. Okay, so these are important because they will be used for all of the uh, drag and lift monitors uh, calculation. So the fluent will calculate the, calculate the drag automatically and it will display that dimensionless coefficient of drag which would be let's say 0 0.285. Uh, for this case uh, which is a 25 degree slant on the rear of the AMED body and 40 meters per second the um, experimental value that, it, that they got for coefficient of drag is 0 0.285. Okay. And basically you would need your half of the frontal area of the car. Since we are using a symmetry condition, the fluent will only calculate half of the forces acting on the car, only for the, the left half that we are having here. If the body was a full model, then all of the forces would be around two times bigger and you would use a two times bigger frontal area. And then the dimensionless coefficient will be the same. So we are using half of everything. Half of the body means half of the forces and half of the frontal area needed. So uh, you can either calculate this frontal area, which we can do from our sketch. This is the rear view. So it's basically the same as the, the front view for our purpose of, of the projected frontal area. And I can just calculate this really quickly. 0 0.389, which would be our width of the car. We're going to split that by two and then multiply that by the height, which is 288 millimeters. So in meters, 0 0.288. And this gives 0 0.05, six, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we would just add the leg here, which is 50 millimeters high and uh, 30 millimeters in diameter, okay? So you would use a plus and let's say this and 0 0.03 times 0 0.05, okay? and equals. And this is our frontal area of the car, which is half of the frontal area for our left half of the car. And you would enter this 
in the reference value for area but if your car has a more complex geometry and you do not uh, know how to calculate there are some recommendations in literature but fluent has a really neat feature where you can go to reports and then go to projected areas click setup and pick your aimed body as the surface or anything which um, which represents any walls or surfaces that represent your obstacle which would mean, mean your car so if your car was split into let's say a hood a front windshield a mirror uh, anything you would pick all of those this is a clear button this is the select all button so we have only our aimed body and we want to have the projected area of that aimed body in the z direction okay and we would click compute and it would say 0 0.06 which is obviously a little bit higher than what we calculated but this is the minimum feature size and this is pretty large this is around three centimeters so we would say 0 0.01 and click compute again and you can see it's a bit more accurate and we will add another zero and click compute okay and this is exactly the same as what we got with our calculator okay and basically what it does it projects a pixel map in the in the in the face or direction of what you specified here and the, the more you uh, diminish this minimum feature size the larger the pixel map gets okay and this is pretty uh, accurate for our purposes and we will just copy this and close go to reference values and enter it here in automotive uh, aerodynamics uh, only the frontal area frontal projected area is used so there is no need for length although although the length for of this body is a thousand forty four millimeters okay you would say uh, compute from velocity inlet and you will see the velocity field over here it will change right away okay and you see it pick up 40 and for the reference zone basically we only have one if you had multiple zones then you would pick one uh, where your walls kind of are uh, but we have only the air so it can either remain empty or you can pick air it makes no difference and that's okay next thing you would go to solution methods okay uh, now i will be using the pressure based coupled solver uh, but uh, i will post in in the last video i will include a comparison of coupled versus simple uh, basically this um, this is just a pressure velocity coupling scheme and uh, what couple does it solves the i think velocity and momentum equations uh, as coupled so uh, it will reach convergence much much faster but it will use almost up to one and a half to two times more resources uh, meaning the memory um, but uh, it will still reach the convergence in a lot less iterations even though those iterations are going to take a bit longer uh, meaning more seconds per iteration than, than the simple scheme but in the end the results will be the same so I will prove that by when the when the convergence monitors for drag are converged I will switch back to simple and continue iterating and you will see that it will keep um, punching out the same values so both are equally um, equally correct but this one will just be finished faster uh, sometimes uh, it might not be an option for you because you'll be trying to, to chase as many cells as you can as you can put in your memory uh, so you can use a simple right away but it will take maybe five to six thousand iterations uh, to reach convergence uh, but pressure velocity coupling uh, will uh, will reach the same in about a thousand iterations so about five, five to times six uh, less five to six times less 